Welcome to Chris Parkin Shooting Sports. This is the Hatsan Breaker 900X brake barrel air rifle. It's available in 177 or 22 and it's £99.99p. And thank you very much to Sportsman Gun Centre for sending this because this has reinvigorated my professional joy and personal pleasure in shooting. Just as a little note, live on camera, I cannot remember the last time I smiled so broadly with a review rifle. This is without doubt the most inexpensive review rifle I have ever used. From the same distributor, Sportsman Gun Center, I received a rifle a few weeks ago which was £9,000. This is about £90. And this one's made me smile more than that one because I'm shooting 20 meters with iron sights and the sense of achievement and the sense of satisfaction is, is quite significant because it's just fun, it's just simple and it's how everybody should get into shooting. What can I tell you about this air rifle? Well, as I said, available in 177 or 22, it is an awesome introduction gun for plinking. It's a steel action, steel barrel, polymer sound moderator on the end and it brake barrel, so you just break it in the middle, bend it down, click and it cocks. It's got an automated safety catch on the top here which can also be reset manually if you need it to and it's equipped with polymer sights but we still call them open sights or iron sights even if they're made of polymer and these are windage and elevation adjustable so you've got two green dots on the back and one red dot on the fore sight. The straight grain beach stock is completely ambidextrous so you can shoot it either right handed or left handed equally comfortably. That's great for anybody wanting to learn to shoot who you may not be sure is or isn't left or right eye dominant because with open sights it can make a little bit more difference but it does have an 11 millimeter scope rail on it so if you want at a later date you can put scope mounts on it and an inexpensive optic too which will help you get more of the accuracy from it because one of the reasons I've enjoyed shooting this gun so much it's not about long range it's not about power it's not about speed it's all about using open sights and learning how to shoot and handle a gun safely making sure it's pressed into your shoulder correctly consistency each time that your trigger operation is a nice steady squeeze and that you are shooting to the absolute best of your ability and i'll tell you now this isn't dissimilar to the air rifle i started shooting 35 years ago with my cousin and do you know what it was just like the excitement of that again when I was using this yesterday and I'm going to tell you even more about it now. The steel action is completely blued so you've got no problems with corrosion but it never hurts to put an oily cloth over it now and again. The polymer trigger is two stages so it pulls slightly to a stop and it breaks through. The overall pull weight on it is 1145 grams which is two pounds and nine ounces. One of the things I remember about the very first air rifle I ever used, and I've actually still owned that air rifle, the trigger weighs six pounds. It's like trying to haul anchor on a small boat. And for anybody who's learning to shoot, having a trigger that's not too aggressive is far more consistent and easy for them to use because they can put the trigger finger on it, they can squeeze it gently, and the trigger will break smoothly and consistently. And it won't be demoralizing for them, especially for a small person without as much strength as someone my size has got. The barrel and moderator are 460 millimeters long overall, but 190 millimeters of that is the moderator. And the foresight is mounted on that to give you the longest sight radius possible to make sure it's consistent. And because both the fore and the rear sight are mounted on the barrel, even though the rifle has got a really strong spring detent, so it always locks exactly back in position, that means you're not going to lose any accuracy or consistency. There's an arrestor block on the scope rail at the back, so as we said, if you put a scope on it, it's not going to move anywhere. You don't need a huge scope, maybe just a four or six times will be fantastic for close range air gun shooting. I've been shooting this between sort of 10 and 30 meters. And do you know what? With the iron sights on it, it's quite important you can actually put those iron sights over the target itself, because if you can't cover the target and still see some of the targets hard to shoot consistently and that's why it's all about shooting consistently and not trying to shoot too distant or make things too hard for yourself enjoy shooting enjoy hitting those tiny little spinner targets because believe you me i shot some 20 and 30 mil spinners 
and when I hit those little 20 millimeter spinners, that front red dot sight is completely covering it over, makes it really difficult, and I'm quite an experienced shooter, and that is what is so thoroughly enjoyable about using iron sights on an air rifle, because you just never run out of challenge. Three shots there, well four shots because one was a miss. And do you know what? That's one of the most rewarding groups I've ever shot with any gun. The stock has got checkering on the grip so it's easy to hold on to, but it's not too big and it's not too bulky. And it's also completely ambidextrous without any kind of palm swell. So it makes it ideal for people with smaller hands. Overall length of the rifle is 1120 millimeters, which is 44 inches. The length of pull from the trigger to the back of the recoil pad is 14 and a half inches or 370 millimeters. And the overall weight is 2.9 kilograms, which is 6.44 pounds. That's not too heavy for most shooters. And at the end of the day, although recoil is very mild, especially on this 177 example, you can use it on a rest bag, you can put your hand underneath it, rest your hand on that rest bag on a nice solid surface, and shooters of all sizes can learn how to shoot a gun like this in a safe, controlled environment. But you know, should you buy this gun and you do want a smaller shooter to use it, you can have stock shortened. Or likewise, you can add thickness and spacers to make the length of pull longer. What's incredibly good about this stock, and such a subtle thing that appeals to someone like me, and I think, isn't it great you can get that on a 100 pound air rifle, but there are many guns out there that don't do it. Well, that is the little bevel on the back of the recoil pad here. Grips into your shoulder, but it stops it snagging at the top when you mount the gun. It doesn't grasp into your clothing and drag them up. If you're not physically strong enough to break the action easily, if you put it over your leg or your knee or somewhere soft like that, just with a bit of resistance, just give it a tap on the steel of the barrel, not the moderator itself. And you can see here, you've got a strong detent latch and there's a rubber transfer port seal, which makes sure all the air stays in. Once it's up, keep your fingers off the trigger and it will just cock down. Some people would like to keep hold of the barrel while they put the pellet in. Um, that's up to your choice. It doesn't hurt to do that because it just means it's a double safety feature. And the pellet just squeezes in there, make sure you don't damage it, make sure it's fully in, and that way the strong detent latch there, when you straighten the gun, it will click back in position, and nothing's going to get damaged. You can shoot the gun from every position to practice how you're going to need to learn how to shoot when you are hunting, using whatever's available to give you the most stable support. I've been shooting it mostly with the iron sights because it's fun, but if you want to, you can always save up a bit more, put a scope on it. It doesn't need to be anything huge or spectacular, just a four by 32 or something like that, give you a great opportunity. It does make the rifle a little bit easier to shoot and you get used to using things like the eye relief and making sure everything's lined up correctly. You can also learn about zeroing scopes and dialing correction if you want to shoot a little bit longer range because you can do all that with an air rifle long before you ever go to a rimfire or a centerfire. Well, I hope you've enjoyed the review of this rifle. I've shot it open sighted in most, but I've also put a scope on it to have a little bit of plinking fun as well. And do you know what? It's not incapable of some small pest control as long as you don't push the distances and over expect from the power levels available. This one's pushing out about nine foot pounds, which is a little bit below the 12 foot pound legal limit, but that means that everything's going to be safe. And I suspect with the internal mechanics probably being identical, if you went for the 2.2 version, although you might have a little bit less muzzle velocity, you will probably get a little bit more muzzle energy from the slightly heavier pellet. A 177 pellet is about eight and a half grains. It's doing around about 700 feet per second. This one I think averaged out at 683 with an 8.4 grain pellet overall. What's important about a gun like this is that, yes, it's not the most expensive gun in the world. It's actually the most inexpensive gun I have ever reviewed. I've shot this rifle today alongside a rifle that was 9,000 pounds, you know, it's a hundred times as much. And 
which was more enjoyable to me? Well, you'll see my enthusiasm on that review video as well compared to this review video. And I think my review enthusiasm here is bubbling over. And if you don't get that, well, you probably don't get me because I love the fact that a gun like this is great joy of ownership to any shooter, a young shooter, whether it be a, a target tool, a plinking tool, or for some slightly more serious pest control. But then again, might be for an adult, might be for someone who wants to, you know, just keep a few feral pigeons at bay, keep a few rats down in the farmyard. And it will do both those things. With a rifle scope fitted, it is easier to shoot, it is more accurate, you will shoot smaller groups on paper. Is it more fun? I'm not sure it is. I love it because I love using the open sights. I do often call them iron sights, and although they are polymer on this, iron sights is always going to be iron sights to me. I think it shoots well, I think it's reasonably quiet, I think it doesn't give too much recoil, it doesn't jar, and it's actually quite easy to cock and shoot. It closes securely, the manual safety catch option, as well as it going to safe automatically when you cock the rifle, does make the rifle a lot more usable because if you don't take the shot, you can keep it clicked back to safety and just maintain it pointed in a safe direction, pointing at the ground, for example, as you're walking around a farm or a field, wherever you've got permission to shoot and you're plinking or zeroing your rifle or practicing on paper. As a brand new gun, yes, there are many more expensive, but you're getting the joy of ownership. You're getting a brand new rifle. And all I can do is think of my experience when I was younger, when I was 13, 14 years old and craving my own first gun. I would have adored a rifle like this. And I did get something similar to this and I was very thankful for it. So please like, subscribe, comment, and don't forget to click the notification bell so you can see the regular uploads on this channel. And remember, your comments are what drive me and Sportsman Gun Centre to make more videos for you. So please don't hesitate to give us those comments. Thanks for watching. Bye for now. The barrel detent is actually quite strong, so for smaller shooters or people with less physical strength, it may be easier just to break it over a bag or something like that from your rest, but make sure you've got a soft surface so that you're not going to damage the underside of the stock. It's a very bright sunny day today, but it's brilliant fun plinking safely in the garden. Now, with a nice soft rest like this, it can be better to put your hand on the gun all the time and rest your hand rather than the gun itself because you've always got your hand with you and if you haven't got your hand with you, you've got bigger things to worry about. It's very important to work on sight alignment to make sure the two green dots have got the red dot at the foresight sat nestled in between them accurately and that your head is in position linear behind them zeroing the rifle you've got windage and elevation adjustment on the rear sight and if you want to you can add a scope too because it has got solid dovetail mounting rails and an arrestor block here to make sure it's going to sit solidly in position when you've cocked the rifle the safety catch is automatic so it will reset every time and you just need to push it forward when you've cocked the rifle point it in a safe direction click the barrel firmly shut it's very stiff, it's got a very strong spring detent, so there's no worries about it moving or misaligning in use. And there's plenty of barrel length to make sure you've got good grip and leverage to cock the action, because there's a spring inside here which is to compress every time you break the barrel. When you're ready to shoot and point in safe direction, the safety catch, which is automatic and resets every time, push it forward and you're ready to shoot. Trigger's two stage and you can feel it quite easily, just going through that first stage before it touches the stop on the second stage, at which point you can start to squeeze. This reminds me so much of shooting an air rifle more than 30 years ago when I was a small kid and I had to find a way of, you know, finding a way to, to break the barrel open or things like that. And now, because I'm bigger, stupider, uglier, and I can just break it open over my own chest or something like that. These are the sort of afternoons as a kid I could spend hours going through a tin of 500 177 caliber pellets. And it's no different now. 
I've had so much fun shooting this gun. I thought about adding a scope to it, but I've really enjoyed the challenge of using the iron sights, or in fact the polymer on this rifle, but they're still called iron sights because you've got to align these two green dots at the back with the red dot at the front.